These are my new amplifiers. These are my new power terminals. The question is, are these actually needed for this application? Let's take away this guy. Now let's focus on these guys. Coupled with that guy, will this be enough with AWG four out cable minus these guys? That's the question. I wanted to put out a video that I thought was very controversial. So I scrapped the video and decided not to put out the video only to come right back around and tell myself, what if there was someone else out there who thought along the same lines that I thought? Wouldn't it be a good idea to get the conversation going? Question is, are these things necessary if you already have adequate wiring? So what do I mean about adequate wiring? I know the amp draw of this amplifier is over 700 amps at max draw. 700 amps. I know that. I also know that I have a high output alternator that can withstand over 300 amps of draw. And I also know that I'm not going to be getting 300 amps of draw because I still have to run my car. The question is this. If I was to supply it this amplifier with this ultra capacitor coupled with a 64 amp hour bank of headway cells less than two foot from this amplifier would AWG 4 eyed cable be enough as a single run to this amplifier AWG 4 eyed cable can withstand 380 amps of a chassis ground up to around 20 feet or so. At two foot from this amplifier to this guy and a bank of headway cells, lithium iron phosphate cells, would that be adequate enough to supply this amplifier? In my mind, I think it would be, okay? In my mind, I think it would be for many different reasons. But I decided in the past, I said, don't put that video out. Don't put it out. People are just going to not do it because that is not the standard of today's car audio systems. People go out and they do this. They see their favorite YouTubers and they do this. Is this going to hurt your system? No. What gain are you going to get from this? That's the question. Two runs of AWG 4 out cable in my mind would not give you much gain in a setup such as this. Not with this type of power with headway cells sitting less than two foot from it. That's my opinion. I wanted to keep that opinion to myself. But then I thought to myself, what if there was someone else out there who thought just like you wouldn't you want them to know what's changed your opinion about it okay so let's get into that what changed my opinion about these guys right here well number one I've never run this much power in my vehicle before I've never had this much power on my bench before but you know who have had this much power on that bench before? Big D Wiz has. And you want to know what Big D Wiz do? He run these guys whenever he can. Okay? Rule of thumb. If somebody has been doing it longer than you, just follow the guy who's already been doing it. Number two. I've never had this much in my trunk before. But you know who have had this much in this trunk before? Guys such as EXO, guys such as SMD, Steve Mead. But, I mean, it don't even have to be those guys. It can be some of the newer guys. Let's pick one. Uh, Parker DeChili. I think that's how you say his last name. Parker, he has 
the 12K. And I think he also has these guys right here. That's his prerogative. I'm not telling him what to do. But when I crunched my numbers and did my math, I didn't think that they were necessary. But like I said, I was swayed. Why? Because these guys have already done it. So I was a bit afraid. I must say this is a lot of power. And I did not want to mess anything up. And I sure as hell didn't want to put out a video who sways, that persuades someone to do something wrong. So I researched, I researched, I watched video after video, tutorial after tutorial, and I said, I'm not going to put out that video. But then I thought to myself, what if someone else thought along the lines that you were thinking back then? Shouldn't you put out the video and get the conversation started? Well, after doing some hard thinking on this, I decided that this would be that video. But keep all this in mind before you watch the video that this is coming from a guy who did not believe in this. Okay? And now this is coming from a guy who wants to get the conversation going and see what you guys have to say in the comment sections below. All right? Don't be hard on me, guys. Here goes the video. Okay, I'll be the first to admit, my car wiring setup is quite ugly. My battery posts look like an octopus, and it runs pretty much that way throughout the build. But hey, it's dual runs of Colossus Flex 4 gauge wire, which means that I'm pretty much taking care of what my demands need. But it can be more cosmetically appealing just to have one single run of zero gauge. So that's what I'm going to be doing, making my selections and sharing with you guys the process. New Concept have some of the best power wire in car audio. When it comes down to upgrading your electrical system, they pretty much have everything for every budget. That is why I've been choosing to go with them for the last five years. And I will suggest that you guys do so as well. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys exactly why I think New Concept is the best bang for your buck when it comes to car audio wiring applications. Before I move on, I want to give a shout out to Hi-Fi Vega. He did a very extensive research video on different types of cables and wire material that actually uh, motivated me to look a little bit further into the way that I shop for power wire. So a lot of this information I'm going to give you now was triggered by that series of videos that he put out. Just wanted to give a shout out to him. He's a pretty cool guy when it comes down to this type of stuff. And I just want you guys to kind of know that there is another source out there, not just him, that has done this work as well. And if you guys are looking for the particular video series that I'm talking about now, just look in my descriptions below. I will link his video down there for you guys. The American wire gauge is a standard used here in the States in terms of electrical components for measuring the diameter or thickness of wire. The first results that we get for the American wire gauge chart is this link for powerstream.com. If you go over here and follow this link, you will scroll and find that this graph right here, they give the gauge of wire in relation to its diameter, the conducted diameter, okay, not the, the jacket. We're not talking about what's surrounding the wire, we're talking about the conductor itself. Okay, they give the diameter in uh, inches, millimeters, and then square millimeters or millimeters squared for the cross section. All right, also down here, they give you the uh, maximum amp for uh, power transmission. What we're going to be looking at is chassis wiring, though, because that's what we're going to be doing anyway. So I'm going to reference this a bit more. So let's go down this chart for inches in diameter, since that's what we measured it in, and see what we're working with. Now, the amplifier that we're talking about, the amplifier in question, which is the Tar Amps MD8000.1, actually requires or is recommended at a minimum 70 millimeters squared for cross-section. They tell you that right there on the amplifier. They say do not use a wire that is less 
than 70 millimeters squared in diameter. So let's go up and see which one of those that it is talking about. Well, this is close enough. This is 67 millimeters squared for cross section, right? So let's go over and see what actual gauge of wire that is. And this is two eye cable. If you are enjoying this video and would like to learn a little bit more about how to simplify car audio, please consider clicking that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. The one eye Colossus Flex from New Concept, it was a half inch in diameter. So if we go up this chart to find anything that's a half inch, to a half inch is a 0.46 inches in diameter. By the American wire gauge standard, this is four hour cable. 380 amps for chassis wiring. And they do specify in some of the readings above that they're talking about shorter distance of wiring as well. Like if you use a wire battery up front or something. But don't take my word for it. Don't take just this one source's word for it. I actually went over to Wikipedia. They're telling you the same thing. Okay. Here we is over here at the Solaris shop. They're telling you the same thing. Even some college wrote up something over here. Where is that? Where is that graph at? The graph is here. Same information. I'm uh I'm very budget friendly. That's why my, my channel is called what it's called. Uh, and I'm just trying to save you guys some money, man. Regardless of the product, I can stand behind a company that presents their product well. And New Concepts did a really good job on their website with this graph. If you guys can take a look here to the side, they have the outer diameter, the core diameter, or the core outer diameter. And of course, in the core is the conductor itself. They give the max load at whatever foot they're talking about, and they actually give you the max length. So you just use this as a reference guide whenever you're going over to these different sizes here so the size right here is actually four odd cable we do not have that we're dealing with the one odd cable and they also have four gauge and eight gauge terminal i mean cable for reference we're going to be dealing with the one odd cable the outer diameter of the one odd cable is 16 millimeters i did not measure that in my previous clip but what we did measure was the inner uh, was the outer or core outer diameter of the conductor, the conductor itself, the wire itself that you see. And that gave us roughly a half inch, which is roughly 12 millimeters in diameter. If you were to go to Google and use their uh, millimeter to inch calculator or converter, you would see that 12 millimeters is roughly 0.47 inches in diameter. And if we were to reference the American wire gauge standard, we would see that that is really, according to their standard, 4 odd cable. So as you guys can see over here, New Concept is doing a really good service to the car audio industry who actually would want a bigger gauge of cable to run their power applications. Now, if we go on, we will see that the max low at 20 foot reference all right, so the max load at 20 foot reference for this cable is 375 amps, okay? And the max length for this would be 500 feet is what they're giving you. So at 20 foot distance, you can actually, or 20 foot run of this, you can actually get 375 amperes from this cable right here. I think that's pretty significant and that's pretty good, especially pertaining to my application because I'm gonna be needing roughly a 17 foot run from the engine bay to the trunk and my high output alternator that I have actually can supply over 300 amps so I'm really looking forward to using this cable to do that so what I would like to know now is what do you guys think about what I just said what is your take on that because to be honest with you I haven't run 
a system like this. I haven't run this much power in my trunk before, but I'm a math guy. I'm a numbers guy. And the numbers are telling me that I should be A-OK with what I'm planning to do here. So what do you guys think? Should I do a dual run or should I just stick with what I know the numbers will support, which is a single run of this oversized wire that I have right now is adequate enough for this application. Let me know in the comment sections below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for visiting the channel to help you simplify car audio. It's the Budget Bass here and I'm out.